If you asked a group of artists what art is, you might get many different answers. A form of expression, maybe a way of escaping from everyday life, possibly even a coping mechanism. But an answer you probably won't hear is math. Now some of you may look at that idea and say, yeah, obviously, math and art are almost opposites, why would I answer with that? But despite popular belief, I'm here to tell you that math and art are not only linked, but the same activity. Now the idea of art being based in math isn't a new one by any means. Using trigonometry to develop perspective and scale dates all the way back to 1415, and combining oil paints together on the easel to create composite colors requires mathematical ratios, whether we're aware of it or not. And this argument also isn't exactly revolutionary. There's been a consensus about this among most artists for a while now, and you'd be hard-pressed to find one that denies the existence of math and art. But what I'm proposing goes many steps beyond that. I'm contending that all art is not only created through, but is only created through math, without exception. And if you're curious about how I could reach such a seemingly radical conclusion, then join me as we discuss the math of art from the art of math. Now at this point, I have to stop and think a little bit about my strategy. I mean, how do you even tackle a claim so broad and so seemingly radical? How do you account for the emotion in art? Well, I guess we can't move forward until we've defined art, so we can start there. Art is defined as the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form, such as painting or sculpture. Now this is a fairly straightforward definition. Art is simply an object that carries the mark of human creativity. Now, armed with our definition, we can truly begin. To make things simpler, we'll be tackling realistic and abstract art separately. I'm going to begin with the realistic because the math can be made extremely apparent in realistic art. From still lifes to portraits, realistic art is a copy of reality. And all of our paints or watercolors or clay, they add nothing but permanence to a scene that already exists. We essentially become human printers. But not only printers, printers that print using math. Now the first of two ways to approach this is from a geometric perspective. Traditional art is made up of nothing but complex geometry, and a good way to visualize this is to simplify that geometry with color blocking. Let's take the Mona Lisa as an example. At first glance, the Mona Lisa appears to be made of thousands or millions of tiny complex brushstrokes, and it is. But those details can be broken down into simpler and simpler geometric shapes, and it's no coincidence that these images begin to appear more and more mathematical, more cold, and more lifeless. And that's because simplifying the art helps to lift the veil and reveal the mechanics that were always there but were harder to see before. So what am I getting at? Well, traditional art is nothing more than your mind's eye copying a real scene into small polygons and curves. And those shapes are able to masquerade as an image because there's too many to individually track, so our brains are forced into seeing the many shapes as one whole. The second way to approach art is through a grid, like pixels on a computer screen, which will inevitably have the same result. Too many dots to track, so they become one picture. Computers use this method to display images. Now, abstract art seems to present a problem at first, but on closer inspection, it's even more directly math-centric than the traditional approach. Total abstractions, like Jackson Pollock strip paintings, are quite literally the result of math-based physics doing its work on the paint through acceleration, gravity, cohesion, and surface tension. This isn't to say that Pollock didn't play a role in the art's creation, but the things he did with intention were done according to the geometry approach. Finally, an example of the category most modern art falls into is scribble art. Scribble art rides a balance between abstraction and concrete intention. Scribble art uses the math-based physics of surface tension to create randomness up close, but keeps enough control to create recognizable figures on a larger scale using the geometry approach from before. So there it is, artistic creation exposed as math in disguise. Paintings and sculptures are nothing more than polygons and dots. In other words, works of art are just very complex math equations by a different name. Now if I wanted to be lazy, or didn't truly care about the argument presented here, then I could just end the video now. And I'm sure most people wouldn't mind that. 
But this is a topic that has weighed on my mind for years. And as such, I want to do it justice by taking this a step further. Because I started with the goal of explaining why art is math. But I really haven't answered that question yet. I've only danced around the idea by attacking the execution of art. And the execution of art isn't art. The real art is created in the mind. And art does definitely include the execution, but it also includes and begins with the idea. And that idea that comes before the first stroke is ever laid across the canvas, that's the true art. Everything else is just a way of preserving that art and showing it to others. It's similar to the difference between a book and the story inside. The book is just a physical way to share the story with others, and even if you burned or destroyed every copy of the book, the story could potentially survive in people's memories and by word of mouth. The book and the story are associated, but separate, just like the idea and the creation within art. So the next big question becomes, is the idea of art based in math? Some of the best art ever created is great not only because of the brushwork, but because of the ideas it communicates. Sadly, however, those ideas aren't original. Because nothing is. The human brain has no potential to create a new idea, a new face, a new work of art. Everything that we feel is the result of chemicals reacting with other chemicals in response to our environment. Everything that we think is the result of neurons firing electrical signals to other neurons. Any pseudo-creative idea that we have is really just a Frankenstein of other previous ideas, mixed with exposure to nature, rearranged, and stitched together again. All we've done is shuffle the pieces. And in addition, nature is simply a complex combination of patterns and other practical math. So all ideas ultimately stem from math. Original thought doesn't exist, and it really doesn't need to exist either. Everything that humans do can be explained away without it. We run and think like very complex machines. The difference between us and our artificial counterparts is that we're complex enough that the seams of our intelligence aren't as visible. But those seams can be found. This also means that creativity, in some sense of the word, doesn't exist. After all, if art can be perfectly qualified using math and nature, then what is left for creativity to explain? So is that all? Art and expression are meaningless, foolish even. We're no better or smarter or more creative than the machines we've made. Creativity doesn't fit the logical puzzle, so it's a lie. Around the end of writing this, that was the mentality I was forced to confront. But I rejected it because I felt I had to. It didn't feel like that could be the end. I refused to believe it was all meaningless. And that refusal is what led me to the third leg of this journey. One late afternoon last summer, while I was in bed surfing the internet, I stumbled upon something that changed me. It was an art piece by Zdzisław Bakinski. It featured a man walking through a rendition of the Valley of Death. The dead statues towered over the figure with malice. They seemed to threaten him from beyond the grave. Now I don't think I'll ever forget that image, because in that moment, I could feel how that figure felt. Without a single word, that painting told a story that I couldn't write in a century. It communicated a feeling of smallness and isolation in a way that words couldn't. In a way that math couldn't. And maybe the Mona Lisa isn't an original idea. Maybe Pollock's work was just as much gravity as it was him. Does that make them any less powerful to look at? Yes, granted, from a mathematical perspective, art is worthless, but humans don't live from a mathematical perspective. They live from a human perspective, and from a human perspective, art is priceless. Art has been a part of culture for as long as there's been culture. The emotion that it conveys and the social cohesion that it brings is powerful and irreplaceable. And this video isn't a call to pack up our bags and forget art. It isn't a call to abandon what makes us human either. It's meant to give us a deeper appreciation of art, to allow us to look at it in a raking light without the rose-colored glasses, and to come to terms with its shortcomings, but at the same time to celebrate and cling ever tighter to the power that art can have. The impact that it has on people? That can't be accounted for in any equation. And as always, thanks for watching.